Hello, I'm going to be reading from Act 4, Scene 2 in Macbeth, and I'll stop and do some analysis along the way. I've got a few props this time. We'll see how that goes. Okay. All right, so you can follow along if you want to. If you want to follow along, you can do that. Okay, Lady Macduff. So just as a reminder, Macduff has gone to England to try to round up support from the king to come back and fight Macbeth to take him off the throne in Scotland. And Macduff has, um, has left his wife and kids there, and we know they're in a vulnerable position because um, Macbeth has recently gone to visit the witches, and he found out that he should beware Macduff. And so he decides, um, even though the other apparitions tell him that he really doesn't need to worry too much because... No one born of a woman can harm him, and he will never be overthrown until the woods uh, marches on his castle. He still decides he's going to kill Macduff, and he's also going to go and kill his wife and kids who are defenseless at home. Okay, so Macduff, Lady Macduff, what had he done to make him fly low land? You must have patience, madam. He had none. His flight was madness. When our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom? To leave his wife, to leave his babes, his mansion and his titles in a place from, wh from whence himself does fly. He loves us not. He wants the natural touch. For the poor wren, the most diminutive of birds, will fight. Her young ones in her nest against the owl. All is the fear and nothing is the love. As little is the wisdom where the flight so runs against all reason. Ross is saying... You've got to be patient. You've got to see what's going to happen. And she said, he's a coward. He just ran away and deserted us, and he's not protecting us. And Ross says, my dearest cuz, I pray you, school yourself. But for your husband, he is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the season. I dare not speak much further, but cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves, when we hold rumor from what we fear, yet know not what we fear but float upon a wild and violent sea each way and move. I take my leave of you. Shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things at the worst will cease or else climb upward to what they were before. My pretty cousin, blessing upon you. <sighs> Fathered he is, and yet he's fatherless, says this about her son. I am so much a fool, should I stay longer, it would be my disgrace and your discomfort. I take my leave at once. Then she talks to her son, Sirrah, your father's dead, and what will you do now? How will you live? She, he's not dead, but she just feels like he's dead to them. As birds do, mother. What, with worms and flies? With what I get, I mean, and so do they. Poor bird, thou'dst never fear the net, nor lime, the pitfall, nor the gin? Gin? I don't know how to say that. And gin. Okay, gin. Why should I, mother? Poor birds they are not set for. My father is not dead for all you're saying. Yes, he is dead. How wilt thou do for a father? Nay, how wilt thou do for a husband? Why, I can buy me twenty at any market. Then you'll buy him to sell again. Thou speakest with all thy wit, and yet in faith with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so? Every one that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. And must they all be hanged that swear and lie? Every one. Who must hang them? Why, the honest men. Then the liars and swearers are fools, for there are liars and swearers enough to beat the honest men and hang up them. So he's saying, if every man that lied was a traitor then there would be no honest men to punish those liars because every everybody does these things. This is what he's saying. And he's saying his father's not a traitor. And Lady Macduff is really um, being very disrespectful to her husband because he is actually trying to save their country. And he's, um, he's being very loyal to um, King Duncan and she should be more supportive of him. Okay, Lady Macduff, now God help thee, poor monkey, but how wilt thou do for a father? If he were dead, you'd weep for him. If you would not, it were a good sign that I should quickly have a new father. So he's saying, 
if my father was dead, you'd be crying. Um, but if you won't cry for that, then that makes me think you're going to marry someone else really quickly. Poor Bradler, how thou talkst. Okay, and then a messenger comes in. Okay, let's do some props here. Okay. Bless you, fair dame, I am not to you known, though in your state of honor I am perfect. I, I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. So I doubt means I suspect. So I suspect some danger is coming. If you will take a homely man's advice, be not found here. Hence with your little ones. To fright you thus, methinks I am too savage. To do worse to you were fell cruelty, which is too nigh your person. Heaven preserve you. I dare abide no longer. And then he runs away. So he's saying, be careful. I think something bad's going to happen. You've got to get out of here. Whither should I fly? I have done no harm. But I remember now I am in this earthly world where to do harm is often laudable. So I didn't do anything wrong. I shouldn't have to leave here. But in the way the world works sometimes, sometimes when you do something bad, you actually get praised for that. And um, to do good sometimes accounted dangerous folly. So sometimes when we do something bad, we are praised. Sometimes when we do something good, we are um, considered that we're doing something horrible and stupid. And dangerous. Why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defense to say I have no, I've done no harm? So she ends up thinking, yeah, it's kind of silly to say I didn't do anything wrong because we know that people get punished and bad things happen to people all the time, even when they've done none, nothing wrong. Okay, then these murderers come in. Uh, okay, I don't have, I don't have a good. This is not suggesting anything by me wearing this hat, but this is the murderer. Okay. Sorry. What are these faces? Where is your husband? I hope in no place so unsanctified where such as thou may findst him. He's a traitor. And then the son says, Thou liest, thou shag-eared villain. And this is the best line in the whole play, and it's so sad that Riley doesn't get to say this line. We've been waiting for this line. But then the murderer says, oh no. What, you egg? Stabs him. Young fry of treachery. And then this is another good line. He has killed me, mother. Run away, I pray you. So Lady Macduff leaves, crying, Murder! followed by the murderers carrying out the son's body. So that's the end of that scene. So that's um, quite dramatic and very short. So just need to do a summary for that one. That's due tomorrow, Tuesday, at some point on Tuesday. And then you can keep, keep reading if you like, and I'll make another video for the next one as well. So thanks for watching.